for a two by two matrix, we saw an example of one cycle with two generalized eigenvectors. For such a small matrix, it is easy to spot the number of cycles and their lengths. But what about large matrices? How many cycles are there? What are their lengths? Will we find enough generalized eigenvectors? And how do we compute them? We will answer those questions for most cases in this video, which gives us a full overview over uh, the generalized eigenvectors. So first of all, it's good to know that if you have different eigenvalues, then the generalized eigenvectors are independent, just as with the normal eigenvectors. So that's very nice. We can work on a case by case basis. We first do the first eigenvalue, compute all its eigenvectors, the generalized ones, and then do the next eigenvalue and so on and so forth. They don't interfere with each other. They are independent of each other. And the proof is just similar to the non-generalized case. We, uh, we did the uh, proof uh, for the uh, normal eigenvectors in an earlier video. You can just copy that one for the uh, generalized eigenvectors. Works the same. So that's good to know. This is the relatively easy part. And what's a really nasty one is this number two, a very important one. Uh, the number of uh, generalized eigenvectors equals the uh, algebraic multiplicity. Very strong one. Number of independent generalized eigenvectors, I should say, equals the algebraic multiplicity. So that's very nice because this means we always have enough generalized eigenvectors. I put proof, uh, uh, do it yourself. Uh, I've only found uh, very technical proofs of this, uh, which are not very suitable for a YouTube video. So if someone knows a really nice, short and elegant proof, then please post, post so in the comments. So we will just use this. That every cycle, number three, is ended by a normal eigenvector. We know that the last eigenvector of a cycle, you can have a whole cycle, but the last one, if you multiply with a minus up to i, you get zero. So the last eigenvector of a cycle is always a normal one. So that means that the number of cycles equals the number of independent uh, eigenvectors for a certain eigenvalue. So that means that the number of cycles equals the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue. So that's already something you know. You know the number of cycles. Uh, then the, uh, if you have the number of cycles, uh, belonging to a certain eigenvalue. So now we look at one eigenvalue, which can have three, four, five, six, ten different cycles belonging to it. And these eigenvalues within the uh, cycle were independent, we saw that earlier. And also the, uh, I, the, the generous eigenvectors between the cycles, they are all independent of each other. So that's good. Uh, proof, by the way, is very similar to the proof for a single cycle, which we did already before. So now we know we can work on a per uh, eigenvalue uh, basis, and we can also work on a per cycle basis, because the cycles do not interfere with each other. And we know the endpoint. We know the number of cycles. We know the endpoints of all cycles. So what are we going to do? First, we compute all eigenvalues of a matrix, the algebraic multiplicities n and geometric multiplicities n just as what you always did, step A. Then we work on eigenvalue per eigenvalue basis. So we pick one eigenvalue, lambda, and do our stuff, and then move on to the next one. So B, we pick one eigenvalue, lambda. And then we can have three cases. Either the geometric multiplicity of lambda is one, or the geometric multiplicity equals the algebraic multiplicity. In both cases, we are happy or this in-between case, then we are not happy. So for the geometric uh, multiplicity one, uh, we will find uh, we have one uh, eigenvalue, sorry, we have one eigenvector, we will find uh, the cycle ending at this V and check whether this length of the cycle indeed equals N. So if we have uh, geometric multiplicity one for this particular lambda, we have only one cycle because we have only one endpoint. 
Uh, if the geometric multiplicity equals the algebraic multiplicity, that's nice because that means that I have only normal eigenvectors. So uh, I will have basically n cycles of all length one because I have only normal eigenvectors. And this in between case, uh, geometric multiplicity between one and algebraic multiplicity, that's very annoying. Uh, uh, ask a mathematician, I put there. That's, that's in general a very annoying case. And then step D, I continue with the next eigenvalue. So go to step B. So how does this work? Uh, this step uh, C. So uh, if the geometric multiplicity equals one, uh, you computed the eigenvector V belonging to that. You want to find the cycle which ends over here with your V1. So how do you do that? Well, if you have the last one, it's easy. If you have your VP, you can just step down with A minus lambda I. So if you have the last one, you can just uh, 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 compute A minus lambda I times this VP. And this gives you this one. And you step down until you are at V1. Problem is, of course, usually you don't have the last one, but the first one. So that means that you have to step up. So how do you step up? Uh, you set uh, V1 equals V. You have the first one there, you have your uh, normal eigenvector. And then you have to step up. So you have to solve uh, V minus 1 times uh, A lambda minus I times X equals V. So you have this, uh, uh, this part, you have A minus lambda I, and now X is your unknown. So instead of solving, so instead of multiplying, you know, now you have to solve something. Uh, you will see what happens if this is inconsistent. Your cycle has already ended. And if this system is consistent, we'll find the solution X is your particular solution plus a homogeneous solution. Your next uh, your, uh, uh, generalized eigenvector is your particular solution. And the homogeneous solution is in the null space of A minus lambda I. So this gives you the uh, normal eigenvectors. Then this in-between step. So uh, we know what to do in this uh, GM equals 1 case. We know uh, what to do if GM equals AM. So what's so nasty here? Now, uh, the, the problem is you have, say, um, uh, AM of 5, GM of 2. A point is that you uh, don't know either, you don't know the end points and you don't know the starting points of your cycle. So you can't get you can't really get going you can determine how long the cycles are uh, but you do not know the end point nor the start point so what to do so an ad hoc solution is well okay first you determine the length of the second cycles and guess the end points and in this way you can uh, uh, fiddle around uh, which you see i call it an ad hoc solution so in general uh, this is a, a pretty annoying and difficult case Fortunately, in order to construct this case like this, you need very big uh, matrices. So in most computations we will do, most examples we will have small matrices. So you don't have to worry about big and annoying examples.